as Maulana says, student of Maulana Sheikh Nazim, may Allah give him long life. We are, we are Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And we must behave according to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We must not behave as if we are no discipline. Discipline is what leads you to Allah's love and Prophet's love. Sahaba, they were disciplined. When Prophet says something, they follow. And Prophet left his sunnah behind to be followed. Not to play with the sunnah and does not care of what we are, how we are acting We have to behave well. And to behave well is means to follow the footsteps of Prophet. You follow the way of Prophet, you will be happy in dunya and akhirah. Prophet said, Don't be like Roosters or chickens when you are praying that prayer is not accepted means don't go he saw someone praying and going quickly so fast up and down up and down up and down <coughs> when he said salam said repeat your prayer is not accepted so we have to follow the way of Prophet. Tariqah is not only Ma'rifatullah, not, it means, of course, Ma'rifatullah is important, but there is Zahir al-Shara. You cannot leave external Sharia, Shari'atullah, praying like as if you did not pray. No, it's better. No need to pray. You sit at home. If you are going to pray like that, your prayer is not accepted. Don't say, no, it is accepted. I have a sheikh. No. Your sheikh is not going to help you when you come against Sharia. So Prophet wasallam said, كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان. Two words are very light on the tongue, very heavy in the scale. Now there is different uh, uh, hadith on that. Some hadith they say these two words are سبحان الله وبحمد سبحان الله وال وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم أستغفر الله means praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى and asking forgiveness the other it says is the شهادة أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله so when you say when Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say it's so light on the tongue and heavy in the scale means you and he say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah means you have to fulfill the requirement of the meaning of Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah this is the requirement of tawheed when you say I am muwahid okay alhamdulillah you are muwahid that's very nice but then you have to implement the, the meaning of Tawheed. And what is the meaning of Tawheed? Is Sajda. No? Is the, the prayers and Sajda. Which Iblis didn't want to do. 
when Allah ordered him to make sajda to Adam, whatever it is, is sajda to ibadah or sajda to ihtiram, respect, sajda for, of uh, worshipness or sajda of respect to Prophet whatever it is, or to Adam salam. Allah order you do sajda. And when you do sajda, you have to keep the discipline or the principle of the sajda. You have to recite at least what is required. What are the requirements to say in the sajda? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi. Not like a parrot. And raise your head. When you say Subhana Rabbi Al A'la wa Bihamdi, you meditate. You you have to meditate on Subhana Rabbi Al A'la wa Bihamdi. Then the secret of A'la will reach you. You know what's A'la? The high. Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. Praise be to my Lord who is the most high. Not only most high, there is no one high. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala high and the rest are slave, servant to him. So when you say subhanahu rabbi al-a'la wa bihamdi and I am thanking him. You meditate on it, Allah dress you with that in every sajda you are doing this three times, Allah dress you with that barakah, with that dress. Don't let shaitan to yudnik, to exhaust you by making you to tankur nakrat dik, to pick, pick, pack, Pack like a cock, like a chicken. Then you be chicken. <laughs> Where is your friend? That's not an answer coming. I said, Where is Ali? Must be here. Huh? Subhan Rabbi Al A'la. Wabihamdi, who says that? Who re- says that in complete? Subhanallah, he raises his hand. The other one they say? Half of it. Subhanallah, be Allah. They don't continue, Wabihamdi. So, when we are not giving the right all the right for our prayers which is a, a kind of worshipness Allah uh, ordered everyone to do it and then so what you are expecting you are not going to have problems you will have problem in dunya and akhir what is then the benefit of tasawwuf when you are dropping the sharia we as Muslims first, Shafi'i or Hanafi school of thought second, third a, belongs to a tariqah, to a way, then we have to follow Shari'atullah first, then to learn Tasawwuf. That's why if we don't know Sharia, don't attend Tasawwuf classes. Go. It's better. Before they were not allowing their students to attend a Tasawwuf class in previous shiuch without studying Sharia completely. And they check them. It's not simple In the time of Sayyidina Abdul Khalik al Ghujduwani, he is one of the golden chains, Aulia. 
came to him the Grand Mufti, the Mufti of that time, Shaykh al Islam. He said, Ya Abdul Khalik, I want to be in this path because this tariqa, Naqshbandi and others, are, is the fruit for ulama. Sharia is the shell that saves the fruit. So they know the importance of the fruit. And that's why I remember my uncles who studied in Azhar. All Azhar Sharif of Egypt, you cannot graduate without being in a Sufi order. Not as today. You graduate and you become alim in Sharia, yes. But you have to, to have both Sharia and Hakika, which is Tasawuf. That's why all four schools of thought mentioned about Tasawuf beside their Sharia. Sayyidina Imam Malik used to say, I have 600 teachers of Tasawuf, 300 teachers of Sharia. So where, what they were teaching him? Pray like a, a, a chicken? Or pray slowly? Meditate on what you are doing. So, we don't understand. Islam accommodates every century. Accommodate every culture accommodate every time and accommodate every moment in the life of a human beings. We cannot say we have to Arabize Islam. You know Arabize? Arabize. Or we want to Pakistanize Islam. Or we want to Indianize Islam. Or you don't, we don't say we want to Europeanize Islam. Or to Americanize Islam. Anyone saying like that, he is considered kafir. Allah can, can say, I want every time someone comes and change Islam. This is what he said? What he said? اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا Today I have perfected and completed not only perfect completed when you complete no addition I completed your religion. I completed religion. He didn't say at the beginning Islam. He said religion. And I complete for you your faith. And I am I gave you with satisfaction Islam as a religion. So you cannot say, we can say, yeah, we want reform, reform of Muslims, not reform of Islam. You cannot reform Islam. You reform Muslims. Muslims are the ones that mistaken. They are not follow. They are not, you are not following. They are not following Shariatullah and they are not understanding the taste that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, gave in that Sharia. So when they don't have taste, they think, oh, we have to change to Pakistanize Islam, to Egyptianize Islam. 
to Saudanize Islam, to Lebanese Islam, to Westernize Islam, to American Islam. No, that's not true. You cannot say that. Islam cannot be except Islam. No addition, no subtraction. No division, no multiplication. Al halal ubayin, wal haram ubayin. Halal is clear, and haram is clear. Sharia is clear. Oh, they say oh, but there is problem in in uh, uh, people are doing different things. They are coming with verses of Holy Quran. Uh, why you have to generalize? If someone coming with something wrong according to his mentality, which he is lost his mind and want to make tafsir on his own commentaries on his own, you don't blame the whole the whole religion. You blame that person. You don't blame the whole Muslim. So, Imam Malik said, "Man tafakkaha wa lam yatasawaf, fakad tafasak." Whoever study only fukuh without study the fruit. You, okay, Sharia is the trunk, is the root of everything. But there is fruit on the branch. Sharia is the trunk, the kernel of the tree. Kernel? It's the trunk which is inside is lobe of the tree. When when deer comes and they want to eat in winter, what they do? They don't find anything. They eat, they scrape scra scra it and eat the sap. Oh, good. So they, they throw the bar and they eat the sap. The sap is tasawuf. The bar is sharia. So they take the sharia, they, they take it and hold it, even and then they reach the inside. Means you need both. You cannot have one and leave the other. That's why he said, whoever study tafuk uh, and leave tasawuf, he is corrupted. Corrupted. And who, وَمَنْ تَسَوَّفَ فَالَمْ وَلَمْ يَتَوَفَّقْ He is hurted. Who study tasawuf only and no Sharia, he is heretic. Because you cannot be a Sufi and don't pray. But you can be a Sharia, pray but don't be Sufi, yes. So the first one is to study fuqa, to, to follow Sharia and not following tasawwuf, the taste, can. But you be oh, cheating, deceiving, you have no taste. You do everything you like. But who study tasawwuf without the sharia also dangerous because it will lead you to be heretic. Like today they say, oh we are Sufis. What you are Sufi? You don't know anything from tasawwuf. Only you are hiding yourself behind the name of tasawwuf and using the name of tasawwuf for own benefits. Now everyone, Imam declaring he is a Sufi. I, I hope it's true, but inshallah, when we were saying in 1991, coming to this country, saying tasawwuf and saying, don't follow Wahhabis, they look at you. So you are speaking, what is this tasawwuf? We never heard about that. You know, Pakistani, you never heard about tasawwuf in your country? If you didn't, Pakistani, you didn't hear about tasawwuf in your country, oh, this is, this is, uh, this is craziness. It is strange, the whole country is Sufis. Oh, Indian, they say the same thing. Indonesian, the same thing. No, Indonesian is better. 
Uh, Arabs, they say the worst. They say, no, there is no tasawwuf. How there is no tasawwuf? Where you, where you throw maqam al-ihsan? Tons of books from big scholars on tasawwuf. What Imam Malik said then, you need to combine them. You study fuqh, sharia, you study tasawwuf. Then you have the shell, corner. What is the corner? The inside. You have the fruit and you have the shell. Then the shell saves the fruit. And then you eat the taste, you get the taste. The cup. Cup, save the water. You will have water. This bottle, save the water. Whenever you want, you open and you drink. You squinch your thirst. If there is no bottle, bottle where you put the water? In your pocket? <laughs> it will go. It will leak. So what you need? You need the cup and the water. The cup reserved for you the bottle. The water inside. So the water is important. Sheikh al-Islam came to Sayyidina Abdul Khalik al Rushdwani and he said I like to be your student. Accept me. He said, oh I have too many. What do you want? He said, I know that Sharia without Tasawwuf there will be no taste. I need taste. I need sweetness. No problem. I need sweetness. I need to, to taste the sweet. Every moment, every moment you will be offered different heavenly fruits with different taste. Not like dunya fruits. You have 10, 15 different kinds or 20 or 100, whatever. Can you have more than 100 kinds of fruit? Did you see I have more than 100 types of fruit? No. No. Heavenly fruit, every fruit does not resemble its, uh, the first one. When you eat that one, you will be given another fruit. You will be given other fruit, infinite number of fruit. What Sayyidah Maryam used to get... كلما دخل عليها زكريا المحراب وجد عندها رزقا. Whenever he entered her niche, he found fruits there. And every time he enters, must be different, not similar. That's heaven. Heaven, there is no repetition. Repetition in dunya. Heaven, there is no repetition. So, he said that Sheikh of Islam, I like to taste that sweetness. I don't want the, the papers. I want the zauk. The, the real taste. He said, okay, what I can do? Since you are insisting, I'm going to take you. So, to to find the sweet of tasawwuf, I'm going to give you some sweet fruit. He said, please, I'm, this is what I am waiting. So he was expecting that Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Khalik al Ghuzduwani, that big sheikh, is going to give him from his heart some kind of knowledge, teaching, or open a book, some manuscript at that time, and read and explain for him to catch the taste. He was so happy, because he's alim, this is how he learned. He said, he's waiting, and he saw the sheikh bringing a donkey. And an axe, and a rope. He said, oh, Sheikh al-Islam, you like the sawwuf to teach you? He said, yeah, I'm waiting to sit with you and learn from you. He said, no, you are going to sit with my donkey. <laughs> Not with me. 
You asked. That's what I'm giving you. To sit, the people come to Maulana and they say, oh, we want to sit with you and learn from you. What do you want to learn? You don't know how to clean yourself and you want to learn? Go learn first how to be a, a person with no ego and come to me. Try to struggle with your ego, not to come with me saying yourself you are alim. No, in front of me no alim. So in front of these sultans, there is no alim. وَفَوْكَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ He said, this is my donkey. I am trusting you on it. You take, go to the, mount, to the forest, cut uh, wood, because we are in need of wood, because we are living in a country, Maru. Maru in near Bukhara, very cold in winter. Cut wood and bring it. That's your job. That's your Sufism. Tasawwuf. Allahu Akbar. You see big conferences. They make on Tasawwuf. They don't pray. They don't fast. And they speak on Tasawwuf. This big sheikh giving the sheikh al Islam a gift of Tasawwuf by giving him the donkey, the rope, and the axe, go cut wood. And you, I'm taking your telephone from you. Yeah. Not now. So, he said, okay. He said, okay, when you go to the mountain, you go this road. Up. So, Sheikh al-Islam, how is going to go and might be someone will see him. So what he will do? Taking the donkey and going up when he was giving fatwas. He wants to teach him humility, humbleness. The soul of his humbleness. It's not, it's not going to break his back and not to teach him. No, he wants to teach him. But first, get Get you, yourself straightened up. So he went. Going there and they saw him. One street they saw him. In the village. And the children you know. Children no discipline. All children. When you are. You were not also. I don't know. They were praising you just now. Someone. This one. But children. Always, especially in the West, they say, leave the child on his nature. If he breaks the whole masjid, no problem. <laughs> Don't talk. You talk, you be in problem. Huh? Keep quiet. Because the child is the sheikh. And all of us murid. Uh, Dr. Jamal, correct? Correct. Children, if they are not disciplined from their childhood, you cannot control them when they are old. It's better to give little bit uh, discipline when the child is a child because he will forget that you disciplined him. He will find himself disciplined. But if you leave him on himself, he will become a gangster. He will join gangs. And how many of children around the world they are in with gangsters? Isn't it? You cannot get them back. So children were running after him and throwing him with stones. Say, oh, Sheikh al-Islam has a donkey now and cutting wood. So, he came back feeling shy, going to the sheikh, and he said, Ya Sayyidi, can you change for me the route, the route, the route, instead of going this way, go that way, that way will be back road, no one will see me. He said, you are disobeying my order, you are 
you, who gave you the right to ask me? When I say something, you do it. The Morana today, he is very soft with people. He doesn't say anything. Look to him before, 20, 30 years ago. Allahu Akbar. You run away. He said, not now, now, I'm not allowing you to go from the, this road. I'm going to make you to go because you said that against your ego, go through the city. And let everyone see you. Uh, he's teaching him. He wants to give him the, 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 the manifestations of the reality of heavens. What we call it Shawarik Al-Anwar. The rising lights, rainbows of manifestations of heavens. And every manifestation doesn't repeat itself. It comes, goes, another one comes, different colors. He wants to give the key, but help me. You first, like when Sayyidina Musa went to Sayyidina Al-Khudr. You cannot be patient with me. First, he rejected, complained. Also, Shaykh al-Islam complained with his Shaykh. Then he said, okay, go through the city. Three levels, always. So first level, can I not go through that road which is small, no one can see me? He was upset, he complained. He said, okay, now you go through the city, second complaint. Then more children were running and people were saying, Sheikh al-Islam got crazy. It's crazy now. So he went to the Sheikh next day, he said, yes, Sayyidi, I am requesting that to change my route because I'm going through the city now it's worse than the first road at least get me back to the first road <laughs> complain first Sayyidina Musa complained for the boat he put a hole in the boat second he killed the boy you cannot anymore take it, Sayyidina Musa. Uh, he said, oh, you know he's saying this? Now, I don't want you. Give me my donkey back. Give me my axe. Give me my rope. Go and clean toilets of the, set, of the cities. This is your job. Look, he's worried. Zara's husband. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Tariqa is not easy. They will bring all, obs all difficulties through your noses. Make you difficult. To make it difficult. Go and clean. Go and clean what people don't clean. That's why the Khadim, the servant of the Masjid, who cleans after people, the first one to enter paradise. Not the Imam, not the Mu'azzin. Even the Imam knows all, memorize the whole Quran, the whole Hadith, that person who is cleaning the Masjid with its uh, restrooms, will go to paradise first. Allah looks at, at uh, sweet people who does not, are, are not arrogant and raise their heads. They're cleaning bathroom. Especially to imagine. Don't complain when someone tells you, go clean the bathroom. Go clean. You will find it later. You are cleaning the waste of others whom they are arrogant. Means you are carrying that difficulty and you are sacrificing yourself for all of them. Because they don't care. 
They don't say, oh, we have to clean also come volunteer for the masjid one day to clean the masjid. Oh, no one caring. So, you go clean the city restrooms, Sheikh al-Islam. He knew now. It's not Sheikh is giving him difficulty, it's giving him difficulty to his ego. As the Sheikh said, he went. Forty days. He called him, he said, I give you your trust. You are now clean. You are able to receive now your amanat. You will, you, are, you will see what people cannot see. You will hear what people cannot hear. He gave past it to him. He became his Khalifa there. So, Sharia first. But, you have to be uh, b- combining it with Tasawuf. Or else, you feel arrogant. Then I know they don't know. So you must say, Ya Rabbi, I don't know also. Whatever you inspire my heart, I need it and they need it. For both of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us always on the track of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And listen to our shuyukh what they say. In order that we will save ourselves from the hands of shaitan or else we will be falling and falling and falling and falling and never coming up. This is unfortunately what we are falling in today. We do not accept nasiha advice. If someone tells you something might be there is wisdom of what he is saying. Listen to what he is saying. Don't say, who are you to listen to you? Listen. Sheikh Sharaf al-Din, may Allah bless his soul, when he was asked, why you are giving so much attention to that young one, means Sheikh Abdullah al who was his uncle, Sheikh Sharaf al-Din. He said, this one, you are mentioning about my uh, nephew. If a child or someone now will go to his house and say your sheikh is telling you to go to Medina or to Mecca, he will not get a raja. Does not hesitate without any doubt, without asking anything, without saying farewell to his wife or children. Immediately, when someone says to him like that, he continues his work, open the door, and go walking to Medina or to Makkah. This kind of belief he has, not to question. Not to say, wait, I have to get some money, I need to get a, today a ticket or before a camel, or I need to get some provisions on the road. No. Forward. Not backward. Not even say salam to his wife. Sheikh's order comes, move. Who do that now? Who can do that now? Tasawuf. He was saying, Sheikh Sharaf al-Din, Tasawwuf is belief. You believe in what the Sheikh says, or you believe when someone says to you anything, you listen as if the Sheikh is saying to you. Because he sees his Sheikh in everything. Not wait, I, am, I have my mobile on the, on the sleeping mode. You know that your Sheikh is calling, I might call, you put it on sleeping mode. Keeping alert. I'm not your sheikh. That's why you are saved. Is Maulana sheikh your sheikh? So if Maulana calls and you are on sleeping mode, 
Ah. Then you will be sleeping forever. <laughs> so, advice today is rejected. No one wants advice. People want wants to keep uh, playing and entertaining. They be happy with entertainment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salamu alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasul Allah ya Rahmatan lil alameen. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا شفيع المذنبين الصلاة والسلام عليك ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته ومغفرة ورضوان عليك في العالمين أنه حميد مجيد أعلى الله تعالى درجاتكم دائما وأمدنا بمدادكم ونفعنا ببركات أنفاسكم القدسية بحرمته بحرمته بحرمة الحي وحرمة سر سورة الفاتحة Allah. So we do ziyara now to the hair of Prophet. Can you bring that?